from the title of this video, of course, you know, I recently sold my YouTube award. I had no idea that I was sitting on such an ancient and valuable relic, but apparently there is at least a market of one for this sort of thing. If you're subscribed here, you probably did that like 15 years ago and have aged like 15 years since then. This isn't to call you old, but you are definitely not in middle school anymore and therefore might not know who Jack Massey Welsh is. Maybe Jack has an enormous millennial following and I'm just ignorant, but I learned about him from a 13 year old. So far be it for me to expect you who are probably 30 to have ever heard of him. But he is kind of a big deal. He has 4 million subscribers and most of them subscribed more recently than 15 years ago. Much of his most popular content is about his ever growing collection of YouTube play buttons that are given out to creators for reaching certain subscriber milestones, 100,000, 1 million, 1 billion, 1 trillion. Thousands of these play buttons have been given away since 2012, and some are more rare than others. For example, Jack bought PewDiePie's diamond encrusted 100 million subscriber play button, which may still be the crown jewel of his collection. But but I happened to possess a 2007 YouTube award for best instructional video for my tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's Cube, which predates the play button program by five years. After my 2007 viral video, I churned out video blogs and all sorts of video projects at a furious pace for like four years. I was so young back then and YouTube was so new and I put so much pressure on myself. I felt like as my channel grew, I had to scale up the ambition of my productions proportionately. Eventually, this neurosis about increasingly ambitious content caught up to me. I overextended myself. I, I burned out and I pretty much left the platform. I've poked my head up periodically, but honestly, I was never ready to be back. If anything that I made back then ever meant something to you, though, I want you to know in 2024, I'm doing well. The world is kind of a mess and obviously that is concerning, but personally, Life is good. Last fall, I organized a league at my local gaming store for the commander format of Magic the Gathering, which some of the neighborhood middle schoolers frequently attend. One of these kids learned about my YouTubing days and took it upon himself to Google every Googleable detail about my life that he could, mostly to razz me constantly, but occasionally to tell me where I have unwittingly stashed away multiple thousands of dollars. He messages me on Discord going, Dan, you have a 2006 YouTube award, right? And I'm like, 2007, but close, yes. And then he tells me about this Jack Massey Welsh guy who has been publicly searching for this particular kind of trophy for multiple years now. And this kid even knew how to get me in touch with Jack. He made a post on Jack's subreddit that he knew someone with an OG YouTube award. I chimed in. I said, it's true. I have this award. I will sell it to you for money. Jack got in touch with me. We went back and forth. And at the end of the day, he gave me eight billion dollars. I couldn't say no to that. I definitely owe this kid a finder's fee, but even more so, I owe him the dignity of calling out Jack for utterly failing to mention his critical role in this transaction. And while it's probably good that Jack is not in the habit of doxing 13 year olds, let me just say from my perspective, this kid deserves to cash in his clout. So if you're one of his friends and he's telling you that he did this, but you're not sure if you should believe him, believe him. 
He really did it. He really made Jack Sucks at Life make that video. In his video about the transaction, Jack really does justice to what the award was won for and what YouTube was like back then. I really do recommend you check it out. He spends a chunk of it talking about me, which is flattering, although he did not go with the video hook that I offered during our email exchange. When I won the YouTube award, I skipped a few days of high school in Nebraska to be flown out to New York City for a press tour with other winners. Jack does mention this in his video and features some of my photos from the trip, but beyond that, uh, he made an editorial decision not to get into the weeds about my appearance on Fox News. Here's what I pitched. I said, one stop on this press tour was an appearance on Fox News. This was the same year that Chris Crocker's Leave Britney Alone video was uploaded. And at the time, this was probably the most famous YouTube video among the general public. So despite not having anything to do with the YouTube awards, Fox News began our segment with a clip from it. I should say, this segment was destined to be weird already. It was myself with a pogo stick and a Rubik's Cube for my talent of doing both simultaneously, Shy Neil with his Harry Potter puppets, and Tay ready to sing a few lines from Chocolate Rain. Making things 1000% weirder though, Fox News forgot to censor the Chris Crocker clip, which begins with the line, and how Fucking dare anyone out there make fun of Britney. They aired that, cut to a shell-shocked Shepard Smith who stammered through an improvised apology before turning it over to the rest of us. My pogo stick screeched far louder than the producers had anticipated. Tay and Neil, bless their hearts, were as awkward with their solo puppet vocal performances as you might expect. The segment was an absolute dumpster fire, and a beautiful snapshot of YouTube's place in popular culture circa early 2008. Immediately after it aired, someone uploaded the segment to YouTube. The video stayed online for a few years, but tragically was taken down more than a decade ago. There is nothing that I want more in this life than to once again find footage of this shit show. Crowdsourced to your millions of subscribers. Surely someone would know how to find this segment, right? Before shipping my YouTube award, when telling friends about my windfall, a few asked if I was sure that I should sell it. Honestly, I never had any strong attachment to the trophy itself. It's neat, but my memories of that time are so much bigger than just one trophy. And what's cooler for me to show someone? A very heavy trophy that spins? Or a video from a famous YouTuber all about my very heavy trophy that spins? From my perspective, this award has actually just ascended it has returned from whence it came as far as its value as a collectible. I don't know how much of a market there really is. Its value to Jack is unique because he's spent years cultivating a niche audience about YouTube trophies. I think we settled on a fair price, but I, I sure don't think that Jack could turn around and just resell the thing for a profit. Who knows, maybe the guy who uploaded the battle at Kruger and won a 2007 YouTube award for best eyewitness video will sell his heavy spinning trophy in 20 years for a trillion dollars. But I'm pretty happy with my eight billion. I think I can live pretty comfortably off that until the heat death of the universe. Standing there in Studio B of Fox News' headquarters in New York City, when I heard the word fucking, 
I, I didn't immediately assume that something had gone wrong. I thought, oh, interesting. They must bleep that out somewhere else. And for a long time, I thought that it happened on a Sunday because after going to commercial, I remember that Shepard Smith quipped that hopefully all the bosses were at church and had missed it. But the only evidence I can find that this ever happened is an ad week post from Friday, March 21st, 2008, where they wrote, Oops, they did it again by Chris Arians. It's Friday, the good one at that. So you'll forgive the fine folks at Studio B for slacking a bit. When teeing up a segment on the YouTube awards, someone forgot to bleep out one of those not so nice to daytime cable news viewer words. Presumably the page had an embedded media player with the currently lost footage. So it must have been Good Friday. And that's why Shep was talking about church. And I just misremembered it at some point over the last 16 years. If any of you have any ideas as to how one might track down this segment from the March 21st, 2008 edition of Studio B with Shepard Smith on the Fox News channel, please leave a comment. I cannot stress enough how much it would mean to me to see this footage again. In hindsight, I think that this may be the weirdest thing that I have ever been a part of and the closest that I have ever been to the beating heart of the zeitgeist. Once the gears were in motion to sell this thing to Jack, I got another Discord message from the kid. This time uh, he had dug up an Ask Me Anything thread from 11 years ago that I did on Reddit. And he asked if I would answer this question any differently today. This may come off a bit harsh, but it's a genuine question. How does it feel to go from one of YouTube's prominent rising channels to more of an afterthought? During 2010, it seemed you were on the fast track to being a mainstay in the top tier of the YouTube community. But now it seems your subscriber base is dwindling with each upload, and the effect you once had on the YouTube community has all but vanished. Does it anger you that the community is so fickle and quick to go to the next flavor of the month YouTuber? I had to take a minute to gather my thoughts, but... Ultimately, I wrote back to the kid. I was very young when I was on the up and up, and this was before the industry was at all established. Folks called it the Wild West, and that's about right. So being in my 30s now and looking back, in that environment, 18-year-old me was charismatic and talented and all that, but not at all in tune with the emerging business of it all. So I don't blame myself for getting burned out. I thought that I had to branch out into every new thing that YouTubers were doing. Now I realize that I could have kept it much more chill, and who knows? But I'm not like mad at kiddo me not figuring it out in real time. And enough time has passed that I can see the forest for the trees and be proud of what I did accomplish instead of regretting some hypothetical timeline that I didn't unlock. Just because I've made this video doesn't mean that I'm back on the wagon, baby. This may very well be the first in a series of one. But uh, I did want to poke my head up, say hello, flaunt my newfound wealth, and I will point out, if you like someone's content and they only make new content once every decade, give or take, doesn't that make it more important to subscribe? I will leave you with this. I have a policy that I don't touch my own Wikipedia article. But currently that article says that I no longer find joy in video blogging. Maybe that could be updated to suggest that, obviously, if I couldn't scrounge some scrap of joy from the process, I wouldn't have dragged you up this mountain in the first place. <laughs>